Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J-Man Time, and today I have a video on Japanese battlecruisers of the First World War. Now, many don't know it, but Japan actually did have a small armada of semi-battlecruisers and traditional battlecruisers that were constructed between the years 1905 and 1911. Now, during this time period, Japan had just come out of a victory against the Imperial Russian Navy during the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905. And during the Russo-Japanese War, the Imperial Japanese Navy had lost some of their capital ships either to Russian mines or ships that had been severely damaged beyond repair during the various naval skirmishes of the Russo-Japanese War. So as a result of this, the Imperial Japanese Navy ordered a new class of armored cruiser. And the first armored cruisers to be built was the Tsukuba class. And the Tsukuba class were constructed between 1905 and 1908. These ships had a displacement of 15,400 tons. Their main armament was four 305 millimeter 12 inch 45 caliber British made Armstrong guns. Their secondary armament was 12 152 millimeter 6 inch quick firing 45 caliber secondary guns and they were also fitted with 12 120 millimeter 4.7 inch 50 caliber third line guns and four 76.2 millimeter 50 caliber QF anti torpedo boat guns and they were also fitted with three 457 millimeter 18 inch torpedo tubes their armor thickness was 102 to 178 millimeters and they had a speed of 20.59 or 30 kilometers per hour and a crew of 820. Now these Tsukuba class were a class of semi battle cruisers. Keep in mind, during their development between 1905 and 1908, their armament was changed multiple times. In 1906, Britain had come out with the first dreadnought battleship, HMS Dreadnought, and during that same time period of between 1906 and 1907, both Britain and Germany had come up with a new class of warship entirely, the battle cruiser. So the Japanese decided to rearm their Tsukuba class with the newer 305mm 12 inch guns. Now these were the same 12 inch guns that were used on Japanese battleships at the time. And this was done in order to give the Tsukuba class a, an advantage or at least give them enough firepower to take on the newer dreadnought battleships and battle cruisers that were coming out at at the time. Now these ships formally entered service in 1911, but they were kind of outdated. The main problem was their propulsion systems, as these ships were actually fitted with the older triple expansion steam engine instead of the newer steam turbines used in the dreadnoughts and dreadnought-like battlecruisers of this time period. Now the Tsukuba class actually consisted of two semi-battlecruisers, the IJN Tsukuba and her sister ship, the IJN in Ecoma, and both of these ships served during the First World War. Now, in 1914, the Great Britain and Japan had become allies, and during World War One, the Japan actually participated in the war against both Germany and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, especially during the Battle of Tsingtao in 1914, where the Imperial Japanese Navy actually helped to sink several German and Austrian warships before capturing the German-held territory of Tsingtao. During this time period, both the Tsukuba and Ikoma were actually involved in this battle and they were also used to hunt down German warships and commerce raiders operating in the Pacific. Now, sadly, the IJN Tsukuba was actually lost following a magazine explosion in 1917. This happened as a result of the newly made Japanese gunpowder known as Isoma gunpowder, which was being used by the Japanese Navy starting in early 1914. And this gunpowder had a tendency to detonate by accident. The Tsukuba became one of the first ships lost as a result of this. 
Another Japanese warship, the Japanese battleship Kawachi, also sank following a similar incident earlier. So these two ships were actually lost due to a magazine explosion, and the Tsukuba became Japan's first battle cruiser or semi battle cruiser to be lost as a result of either combat or a magazine explosion in this case. The Ikoma continued to serve up until 1919. During this time period, she was downgraded to a gunnery training ship, and later on, as a result of the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922, she was later disarmed and sold for scrap in 1924, thus ending the history of the Tsukuba class of semi battle cruisers of the Imperial Japanese Navy of World War I and the post World War I era. Next class of Japanese battle cruiser was the Ibuki class of battle cruiser or semi battle cruiser which were constructed between 1907 and 1911 and this consisted of two ships the IJN Ibuki and her sister ship the IJN Kurama. These ships had a displacement of 15,595 tons. Later on this was upgraded to 21,000 tons. These ships had a main armament of four 305 millimeter 12 12 inch or 45 caliber British made Armstrong cannons, four 203 millimeter 8 inch or 45 caliber British Armstrong secondary guns, 12 152 millimeter 6 inch quick firing 45 caliber guns, 14 120 millimeter 4.7 inch or 40 caliber guns, four 76.2 millimeter 3 inch 40 caliber quick fire guns and 3 450 millimeter 17.7 inch torpedo tubes. These ships had a armor thickness of between 102 and 178 millimeters and an increased speed of 21.5 knots or 39 kilometers per hour and a crew of 844. And just like the Tsukuba class of semi battle cruisers slash armored cruisers, the Ibuki class was originally designed as newly built armored cruisers. But after the introduction of HMS Dreadnought and other British battleships, Dreadnought battleships, and later British and German battle cruisers designed between 1906 and 1910, the Japanese decided to rearm the Ibuki class with 305 millimeter guns instead of the original. 8 inch guns, turning them into semi battle cruisers. By the time this was completed, the ships had an increased displacement of 21,787 tons. These two ships were actually quite different. The IJN Ibuki had modern steam turbines, two British made Curtis steam turbines, while the IJN Kurama was given the older triple expansion steam engines, two vertical triple expansion steam engines powered by 28 Mayabara steam boilers, which made these two ships pretty different and also gave them different speeds. The Kurama had a slower speed of 20.5 knots while the Ibuki had a faster speed of 21.5 knots. So a one knot difference between these two vessels. And just like the Tsukuba class of semi battle cruiser, these, the Ibuki class of semi battle cruisers also served, also served in World War One. And during World War One, they also took part in the Tsingtao offensive and later on, and they took part in the hunt for the German and Austrian warships and commercial ships operating in the Pacific Theater. After World War I, these ships were disarmed as a result of the Washington Naval Treaty, and later on, between the years 1924 and 1925, these two ships were sold for scrap, thus ending the history of the Ibuki class of semi battle cruisers slash armored cruisers from 1907 and 1911. And the final class of Japanese battle cruiser to enter service was the Congo class of battle cruiser designed between 1914 and 1915. And these ships consisted of the IJN Congo, the IJN Hiei, the IJN Kirishima, and the IJN Haruna, which were all constructed between 1911 and 1915. Now you may remember these warships as Japanese battleships in the Second World War, but these Congo class ships were originally constructed as battle cruisers and actually served in World War I. 
and their original displacement as battle cruisers was 26,952 tons. Their main armament was eight 360 millimeter 14 inch 45 caliber guns. The secondary armament was 16 152 millimeter 6 inch quick firing 50 caliber secondary guns or 76.2 millimeter 3 inch 50 caliber anti-torpedo boat guns uh, slash later anti-aircraft guns and they were also fitted with three 457 millimeter 18 inch torpedo tubes their armor thickness was between the 76 and 203 millimeters and a crew of 1193 and a speed of 27.5 knots. Unlike the Tsukuba and Ibuki class of semi battle cruisers, the Congo class battle cruiser didn't see much action during World War I as the ships were just entering service in late 1915. By this point, the German and Austro Hungarian navies operating in East Asia were pretty much destroyed or captured by the Allied navies, including Japan. So the Congo class didn't really have much to do after 1915 when they entered service. Later on, after World War I, these ships were actually converted into fast battleships, and during that time period, their displacement increased from 27,500 tons to 32,200 tons, and these ships would later go on to serve in the Second World War. Now, during World War II, all of these ships were eventually sunk, so I'm going to go over how these vessels were lost one by one. And the first Congo class battle cruiser slash fast battleship to be sunk was the IJN Hie. On the 13th of November 1942, during the first battle of Guadalcanal, during this time period, the, the Hie actually came into contact with several American cruisers, the cruisers San Francisco, Portland, and several destroyers and during this time period she was hit by over 50 203 millimeter shells from the cruisers and dozens upon dozens of shell hits from the American destroyers. She managed to survive this battle but later on the next day she came under attack from American aircraft from the USS Enterprise and during this time period she was hit by an additional one 454 kilogram bomb and she also took two one thousand pound torpedo hits later on that she also was hit by aircraft from the USS Saratoga she took two torpedo hits from that air squadron and by the end of the battle she had been hit again this time by bombs from American B-17s and by the end of the battle she had lost most of her speed and she was eventually sunk by her own escorts thus ending the history of the IJN Hie. The IJN Kirishima was the next to be sunk. She was also sunk during the same battle as the Hiei during the Battle of Sowo Island on November 1942. During this time period, also known as the Second Battle of Guadalcanal, during this time period, the Kirishima actually encountered two American battleships, the USS Washington and the USS South Dakota. During this engagement, she was actually hit by nine of 406 millimeter shells from the USS Washington and she was also hit by 40 127 caliber 5 inch shells secondary armament shells from the same battleships. Later on she sank off the coast of Sowo Island the next morning thus ending the history of the IJN Kirishima. The next Congo class battle cruiser slash battleship to be sunk was the Congo herself on November the 21st 1944, the IJN Congo was en route to Japan when she came under attack from an American submarine, the, the USS Sea Lion. During this time period, she was hit by two or three torpedoes from the Sea Lion. Two hours later, she had blown up and sunk as a result of these two to three torpedo hits. Most likely, one of these torpedoes struck her magazine, causing her to explode later on and sink, taking most of her crew with her, thus ending the history of the IJN Congo. 
Congo herself. And finally, the last Congo class ship to be sunk was the IJN Haruna. She came under attack from aircraft from various American aircrafts operating near the Japanese port of Kure Harbor. She was stationed at the Japanese base at Kure Harbor when she came under attack from American aircraft from Task Force 38. During this attack, she received three and nine direct hits, hits from American aircraft. Some of these were below the waterline. Later on, she settled to the bottom of Kure Harbor. Now, after World War II, the ship actually stayed in this position for at least two years before she was finally raised and scrapped between 1946 and 1948, thus ending the history of the IJN Haruna, the last of the Congo class battlecruiser slash fast battleships to be sunk during the Second World War. Now, Japan actually designed one class of super battle cruiser after World War I, and these were known as the Amagi class battle cruisers, which were designed between 1919 and 1923. Now, these ships consisted of the IJN Amagi, the IJN Akagi, the IJN Otago, and the IJN Takeo. And these ships were actually constructed between 1920 and 1923. Unfortunately, on September the 1st, 1923, an earthquake actually struck Japan, and this later damaged this later damaged the first of these battle cruisers under construction, the Amagi, which was later broken up for scrap. As a result of this, the Japanese began to shift development from battle cruisers to aircraft carriers. And in 1924-1925, the Japanese got the idea to convert the existing Amagi Hawks into aircraft carriers. And the first of these to be completed was the IJN Akagi, who, which was converted into an aircraft carrier. The other two surviving Hawks the Otago and Takeo were later incomplete and later broken up between 1924 and 1926, thus ending their history. Amagi later went on to serve as an aircraft carrier during the Second World War for the Imperial Japanese Navy. But she was eventually sunk during the Second World War, just like the rest of the Imperial Japanese aircraft carriers used during World War II. Now, these Amagi class battle cruisers were to have a displacement of 47,000 tons. Their main armament was to be 410 millimeter, 45 caliber Type 3 Shiki main guns. Their secondary armament was supposed to be 16 to 140 millimeter, 50 caliber type 3 shiki secondary guns their third line armament was supposed to be four 120 millimeter 45 caliber type 10 shiki dual purpose guns slash anti-aircraft guns and their third line and their fourth line armament was to be eight 610 millimeter torpedo tubes the armor thickness of the amagi class battle cruisers would have been anywhere from 30 to 254 millimeters and some other sources state that the armor thickness was to be 254 millimeters upwards to 280 millimeters maximum, with some other sources stating that 356 millimeters would have been the final armor thickness of these battle cruisers at their maximum. These ships were to have a speed of 30 knots, and they were to have a crew of at least 1,500 sailors, similar to that of the British battle cruiser HMS Hood for example, which had also entered service in the years that the Amagi class were laid down between 1920 and 1921, 1924. So that's basically it. The Akagi the only Amagi class battle cruiser to be completed was later completed as an aircraft carrier and was sunk in World War II. And that basically ends the history of the Japanese battle cruiser as a whole. If you ask me, my favorite of these warships is clearly the first class of Japanese semi battle cruisers, the Tsukuba class. But which of these are your favorite? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J Man Time signing off.